Hey, this is Chris with Beer Town Austin. I'm here at the Flying Saucer in Austin with uh, Rob Landerman. Yeah. And Sam Wynn. Welcome to another episode of Over Pint. Cheers, guys. Ow! Mmm, tasty. Uh, <sighs> Sam, you uh, provided this. Why don't you tell us a little about what we're uh, swinging here? Um, this is a Lost Abbey Devotion, um, and it is a Belgian pale. Uh, on the label, they talk about uh, about using all the fresh hops and stuff in there. Um, never had this beer before right now. Um, it's pretty tasty. It's um, typically Belgian pale. That category is uh, one that's often, often used for a very broad spectrum of beers, but uh, this one's a Belgian pale in the aspect of kind of like a Belgian IPA, where it's actually got that good full hoppy flavor but the definite uh, yeast uh, plays its part and brings in the Belgian aspect to it. Um, Lost Abbey is uh, kind of the sister brewery of Pizza Port out in California. Um, they actually brew out of uh, Stone's original brew house, uh, which is kind of a cool little fact about their brewery. Um, but uh, they make some great beers and uh, I'm happy to be sipping on one right now. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah, the Belgian pale slash IPA style is something I've I like, you know, you don't really see a whole lot of it, you know, it doesn't, not many of them really come through Texas, so, yeah, thanks for sharing, I appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, I'm hanging out with uh, Rob and Sam tonight, because uh, you are looking at 50% of the uh, certified Cicerones in Texas. Give them a hand, people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for people who don't know what that means, you guys want to explain that a little bit. Sure. Uh, the Cicerone program was developed by Ray Daniels um, a few years back, and it's basically the beer world's equivalent of the wine sommelier. So it's uh, you know someone that has uh, in-depth beer knowledge of you know styles, history of beer, uh, beer and food pairings, uh, you know draft technology, yeah, proper ways to serve beer, glassware, uh, bottle service, and things like that. So it's, it's the entire spectrum of beer from point A to point B essentially so yeah there's a lot more draft tech uh, information on it than I thought there was originally um, going into the whole process you know you hear Cicerone kind of like a, a beer sommelier basically um, I was thinking it would be a lot more about uh, you know flavor profiles and stuff like that but um, I'd say I mean a quarter to 30% of the test was uh, was all draft tech knowledge, uh, balancing draft systems and uh, and things like that. And uh, you know, we uh, I helped install our draft system here, so I was able to have some firsthand experience. But um, there's all kinds of stuff like long draw systems for stadiums and uh, uh, gly glycol systems and all kinds of stuff that uh, we really didn't have much experience on. So there was definitely some book learning involved as well. So and. I get, what, what does that mean to be Cicerone certified? There are different levels, and uh, there's a beer server level. There's three Cer levels. The first level is a certified beer server, and that basically tells a, a pretty short, I think it's like 20 questions or something like that, a pretty short exam you can take on the Cicerone website. And um, that's for anybody in the industry or anybody wanting to get in, in the industry or beer enthusiasts um, anywhere. And then the next level is the certified Cicerone, which is the, you know, used to be the, the top level. I think right about the time that we got that, they, they created a new level, and we were like, damn it. So uh, now they have the master Cicerone, which, you know, I haven't looked a whole lot into that, so I don't know the ins and outs of that. But I do know you have to kind of be signed off by, like, a distributor or a brewer specifically to, to be able to move to that level. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, Ray Daniels started the whole Cicerone certification program, um, and uh, he legitimizes it because uh, you know he teaches up at Siebel Institute uh, and is the author of a, of a couple different books, um, and um, you know he's just a really uh, really great guy. Uh, one of my review courses I took online, uh, he actually hosted himself and was sitting in his office on this webcam, and he went through the entire 2008 exam with us, and it was myself and only about five other people that were in on. In the little chat room so I had a three-hour sit-down class with Ray Daniels uh, to prepare myself for the test I was pretty pumped about getting to do that um, it was a uh, it was a lot of fun to uh, to, to see him uh, you know reading off the exam and you know teaching us straight from his own mouth 
So what goes into um, into the exam to actually being uh, cert uh, from certified? It's pretty it's pretty lengthy and arduous, but it's you know still kind of enjoyable and fun to take at the same time. It was uh, somewhere around the 173, if I remember correctly. It was like 173 short answer questions. There's no multiple choice at all. Um, covering uh, hey, short yeah, oh, yeah, covering all of those subjects. You know the history of beer, uh, history of certain styles, the specific specifics of styles like what's the original gravity, what are the ingredients, things like that. Um, you know the draft tech, like Sam said, took like a huge portion of that stuff up, and then uh, there's a small portion at the end on pairing beer and food flavors, and then there's also a little bit on uh, troubleshooting off flavors. And then we went into, what was it, four or five flights of uh, beer tasting. And that part was pretty cool. Uh, the first part of the beer tasting was they gave you four beers, and then you had to um, identify what style of beer it was. Mm -hmm. And then the second one was they gave you one control beer, where it was just like uh, nothing had been done with the beer. And then that same beer that had been altered in uh, four different ways, and then one of them that was also virgin and you had to decipher which ones had off flavors what the off flavor was and how it's caused and then uh, and then after that it was just another beer tasting and they gave you a scenario like if this beer is being served at your bar and this person said it tastes like this uh, does that actually taste like that and if so why um, yeah he told us it was uh, going to be a pilsner and uh, the beer he actually used was a Corona he left out in the hot sun for a couple days um, so that was a pretty easy one to uh, <laughs> to spot yeah it was like it was like skunky um, but yeah no there was uh, some of them were, were really in your face uh, you know uh, oxidation I remember in particular um, you know one of the flavors that you get with oxidation is uh, is kind of that wet paper or cardboard flavor and that beer that they gave us tasted like, tasted like liquid paper. Cardboard, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's what white it's what I would figure white out would taste like. <laughs> You're <laughs> early home brewing yeah, experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. It's bad. Um, but it, it was cool, you know, they did uh, all kinds of stuff. You know, that short answer portion, I felt like I flew through it and I think we were riding for two, two and a half hours. Yeah. It, was it a, seemed like it, it went by, a, but yeah, time had time had definitely yeah, it was crept. A, it was a solid uh, solid thing, but you know, fortunately for us we took it up at North by Northwest so we were able to uh, have a good meal and a and a good pine afterwards to uh, congratulate yeah. ourselves. So, yeah. so um, uh, what are some of the things you guys are doing now with your uh, newfound Cicerone powers? Um, you know, one of the things that, that working here uh, provides for us as an option is uh, is hosting these tastings that we do. Um, you know, a lot of uh, that and also uh, our, our Randall programs on Thursday with our rare beer um, helps us uh, just kind of branch out and do whatever we want to do. Um, we're both uh, home brewers. He's a little bit more active brewer than I am. I've been taking a hiatus for a little while, but uh, it's just kind of a fun way to, uh, to you know, bring that hobby with us into work and uh, um, but you know the tastings is really where we get to uh, flex the Cicerone muscle I guess I would say um, you know we uh, we pretty much get to pick whatever beers we want and uh, put whatever food with it we want um, one of the it's, it's great working with this company because uh, you know we've developed relationships over the last 15 years with so many different people that uh, you know uh, it's just right at our disposal. Uh, Tom Allen came out and did the last one. Uh, we've got some guys from Lagunitas and Ska coming out to do a Ska Gunitas night with us uh, oh, coming cool. up at the beginning of March. Um, and, and we also uh, just set up one with uh, the date is yet to be confirmed. It's tentative for sometime in May, but we're going to get uh, Rob Todd from Allagash and Adam Avery are going to do a collaboration dinner, which should be thrilling to say the least. You know, that was going to be absurd. We're talking about like ten beers for that one. Five, beer, five <laughs> beers from each brewery and then a uh, and then we get to kind of <coughs> look at those beers and figure out what foods are going to pair with them each. So, yeah. you know, like Sam said, it's a really good way to flex the muscle and, uh, you know, use that Cicerone knowledge that we got to make it mean something. And Yeah, well, cool. Yeah, I was able to come out to that North Coast one, and it was, it was incredible. And you guys, really, um, my wife is not much of a beer drinker, but with the, the talk through of the beer and the pairing with the food, she walked away, you know, liking a couple and actually – Took some notes and I don't know. Was... All right, we got to wrap it up. So, um, anyway, thanks guys Absolutely. for um, having us out. And uh, Sam, thanks for the beer. All right, everybody, Thank you guys. cheers. Cheers. This was over a pint. <laughs>